I would like to greet both parties as well as all those present in this courtroom and all those present in the gallery. Mr. Registrar, would you please call the case? Il s'agit de l'affaire IT 9820. Case number IT 98291, the prosecutor of the tribunal versus Stanislaw College. Appearances, please. The prosecution. First. Good morning, Judge Rehead. My name is Mark Harmon, and I'm assisted by my colleague, Mr. Michael Blacksell. Thank you, Mr. Harmon. May I call on the defense? Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Nicola Kostic. I have been chosen by Mr. Galich, General Galich, to represent him. In I'm an attorney from uh, licensed in the United States for some 30 years. I have also appeared here uh, in front of this tribunal on a number of prior cases. And um, I am, uh, of course, uh, uh, going to be representing Mr. Golich today, Your Honor. Now, I would like to ask you, Mr. Kostic, can the accused hear the proceedings in a language he understands? Has he got the necessary equipment? And is he following? He says yes, Your Honor. Thank you. That makes it uh, quite easy for us now to proceed. Uh, under Rule 62 of the Rules of Procedure and Evidence of our International Criminal Tribunal, as you know, an initial appearance uh, is required upon transfer of the accused to the seat of the tribunal. Uh, I would like now to, to call on the registrar, Mr. Dubuisson, uh, to read Article 20, Paragraph 3, and Article 21 of the Tribunal Statute first, and then to read to us Article 62 of the Rules of Procedural Evidence as they are relevant to this initial appearance. Article 20, Commencement and Conduct of Trial Proceedings, Point 3. The trial chamber shall read the indictment, satisfy itself that the rights of the accused are respected, confirm that the accused understands the indictment, the, and instruct the accused to enter a plea. The trial chamber shall set the date for trial. Article 21, Rights of the Accused. 1. All persons shall be equal before the International Tribunal. 2. In the determination of charges against him, the accused shall be entitled to a fair and public hearing subject to Article 22 of the statute. 3. The accused shall be presumed innocent until proven guilty according to the provisions of the present statute. 4. In the determination of any charges against the accused pursuant to the present statute, the accused shall be entitled to the following minimum guarantees in full equality. A. To be informed promptly and in detail in a language which he understands of the nature and cause of the charge against him. B. To have adequate time and facilities for the preparation of his defense and to communicate with counsel of his own choosing. C, to be tried without undue delay. D, to be tried in his presence and to defend himself in person or through legal assistance of his own choosing, to be informed if he does not have legal assistance of his right and to have legal assistance assigned to him in any case where the interests of justice so require and without payment by him in any such case if he does not have sufficient means to pay for it. E. To examine or have examined the witnesses against him and to obtain the attendance and examination of witnesses on his behalf under the same conditions as witnesses against him. And to have the free assistance of an interpreter if he cannot understand or speak the language uh, used in the international contribunal g, g to not not to be compelled to testify against himself or to confess guilt article 62 du règlement rule 62 
of the uh, rules of procedure and evidence uh, into initial appearance of the accused. Upon transfer of an accused in the seat of the tribunal, the president shall forthwith assign the case to a trial chamber. The accused shall be brought before the trial chamber of a, or a judge thereof without delay and shall be formally charged. The trial chamber of the ju judge shall one, satisfy itself, himself or herself, that the right of the accused or counsel is respected. Two, read or uh, to, or have the indictment read to the accused in the language of the accused speaks and understands and satisfy itself, himself or herself, that the accused understands the indictment. Three, inform the accused that without, within 30 days of the initial appearance, he or she will be called upon to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty on each count, but that should the accused so request, he or she may immediately immediately enter a plea of guilty or not guilty on one or more count. Four, if the accused fails to enter a plea at the initial or any further appearance, enter a plea of not guilty on the accused's behalf. Five, in case of a plea of not guilty, instruct the registrar to set a date for trial. Six, in case of a plea of guilty, A, if before the trial chamber, act in accordance with the rule 62 bis or b if before a judge refer the plea to the trial chamber so that it may act in accordance with rule 62 bis seven instruct the registrar to set such other dates as appropriate Merci, Monsieur de Buisson. thank you monsieur de Buisson. i will now call upon the registrar to read the relevant portions of the confidential indictment. This confidential indictment was confirmed by Judge Antonio Cassese on 24th of April 1999. If the defense counsel so chooses and the accused, we can also uh, read later the annexes to the indictment, I'll leave up, that up to you, uh, because they are separate from the indictment. So we'll start by reading only the relevant portions of the indictment. I call upon our registrar, Monsieur de Bisson, to read it. Le procureur contre the prosecutor against Stanislav Galic, indictment. The Prosecutor of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, pursuant to her authority under Article 18 of the Statute of the Tribunal, charges Stanislav Galic with crimes against humanity and violations of the laws and customs of war as set forth below. Background. 1. Sarajevo is the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina and is situated on an east to west axis along the Miljatska River Valley in central Bosnia. The the city is dominated by steep surrounding mountain slopes. To the east, there is a dense city center making up a residential and commercial old town which spreads up the adjacent uh, hillsides. There are new municipalities with commercial development and extensive residential accommodation on more open ground to the west. The city traces its history back nearly 2,000 years. Before 1992, Sarajevo was a flourishing multi-ethnic community and a cultural and economic center in the former Yugoslavia. A 1991 census indicated that the city and immediate surroundings had a population of some 525,980 inhabitants with an ethnic composition of 49.3% Muslim, 29.9% Serb, 6.6% Croat, 10.7% describing themselves as Yugoslav and 3.5% other groups. Sarajevo accounted for 11% of the population of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Two. Shortly after Bosnia and Herzegovina was internationally recognized as an independent state on the 6th of April 1992, armed hostilities broke out in Sarajevo. Even before the beginning of the conflict, armed forces supporting the Serbian Democratic Party, the SDS, and elements of the Yugoslav People's Army, the JNA, including units of the 4th Corps of the 2nd Military District, occupied strategic positions in and around Sarajevo. The city was subsequently subjected to blockade and relentless bombardment and sniper attacks from these positions. 
Much of the bombardment and sniping was from positions in the hills around and overlooking Sarajevo, from which the attackers had a clear, detailed and commanding view of the city and its civilian population. Three. On or around the 20th of May 1992, after partial withdrawal of the JNA forces from Bosnia, the second military district was effectively transformed into part of the Bosnian Serbian Army, the BRS, the Vojska Republika Srpske. As part of this transformation, the fourth corps of the second military district became the Sarajevo Romania Corps, with its headquarters in Lukavica Barracks, just to the southwest of Sarajevo. Four. A. For 44 months, the Sarajevo Romania Corps implemented a strategy, a military strategy which used shelling and sniping to kill, maim, wound, and terrorize the civilian inhabitants of Sarajevo. The shelling and sniping killed and wounded thousands of civilians of both sexes and all ages, including children and the elderly. B. The Sarajevo Romania Corps directed shelling and sniping at civilians who were tending vegetable plots, queuing for bread, collecting water, tending funerals, shopping in markets, riding on trams, gathering wood, or simply walking with their children or friends. People were even injured and killed inside their own homes, being hit by bullets that came through the windows. The attacks on Sarajevo civilians were often unrelated to military actions and were designed to keep the inhabitants in a constant state of terror. C. Because of the shelling and sniping against civilians, the life of every Sarajevo inhabitant became a daily struggle to survive. Without gas, electricity or running water, people were forced to venture outside to find basic living necessities. Each time they did so, whether to collect wood, fetch water, or buy some bread, they risked death. In addition to the sheer human carnage that the shelling and sniping caused, the endless threat of death and maiming caused extensive trauma and psychological damage to the inhabitants of Sarajevo. The accused, five. Stanislav Galic, was born the son of Dushan on the 12th of March, 1943, in Golesh village, Banyaluka municipality. He has held the rank of Major General in the Bosnian Serb Army, the BRS. He assumed command of the Sarajevo Romania Corps on or about the 10th of September, 1992, and remained in that position until about the 10th of August, 1994, during which time the forces under his command and control conducted a campaign of sniping and shelling against the civilian population of Sarajevo. General Allegations 6. The Sarajevo Romania Corps formed a significant part of the VRS under the ultimate command of Ratko Mladic, the commander of the main staff, and Radovan Karadzic, initially president of the presidency of the Bosnian Serb administration in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and subsequently as president of the Republika Srpska and designated supreme commander of its armed forces. 7. By the 10th of September 1992, the Sarajevo Romania Corps controlled all the Bosnian Serb territory around Sarajevo, including established confrontation lines and artillery positions. 8. Stanislav Galic, during his period as Corps Commander of the Sarajevo Romania Corps, was in a position of superior authority to approximately 18,000 military personnel formed into 10 brigades. 9. As Corps Commander of the Sarajevo Romania Corps, Stanislav Galic demonstrated his authority and control over forces comprising and attached to the Sarajevo Romania Corps inter alia by participating in negotiations and the implementation of a heavy weapons total exclusion zone controlling access to UNPROFOR and other UN personnel to territory around Sarajevo and, in particular, heavy weapons sites. 10. 
Stanislav Galic bears individual criminal responsibility for planning, instigating, ordering, committing or otherwise aiding and abetting in the planning, preparation or execution of the campaign of shelling and sniping against the civilian populations of Sarajevo and the acts set forth below by the forces and persons under his command pursuant to Article 7.1 of the Statute of the Tribunal. 11. Stanislav Galic also bears individual criminal responsibility as a commander of the Sarajevo Romania Corps, responsible for the conduct of subordinates, in respect of whom he was in a position of superior authority. Stanislav Galic is responsible for the acts and omissions of his subordinates, knowing or having reason to know that the subordinates were about to commit such acts or had done so, failing to take responsible steps to prevent such acts or to punish the perpetrators thereof. By failing to take the actions required of a person in superior authority, Stanislav Galic is responsible for the acts and omissions set forth below pursuant to Article 7.3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. 12. At all material times, Relevant to this indictment, an armed conflict existed in Bosnia and Herzegovina in the territory of the former Yugoslavia, 13. Wherever a crime against humanity, a crime recognized by Article 5 of the Statute of the Tribunal, is charged in this indictment, the alleged acts or omissions were part of a widespread or systematic or large-scale attack directed against a civilian population. 14. Wherever a violation of the laws or customs of war, a crime recognized by Article 3 of the Statute of the Tribunal is charged in this indictment, the acts or omissions were charged against civilian populations. 15. All counts in this indictment allege the totality of the campaigns of sniping and shelling against the civilian population, but the scale was so great that the schedules to the individual groups of counts in this indictment set forth only a small representative number of individual incidents for specificity of pleading. 16. At all relevant times, Stanislav Galic was required to abide by the laws or customs governing the conduct of war. Charges. Count 1. Infliction of Terror. From about 10 September 1992 to about 10 August 1994, Stanislav Galic, as commander of Bosnian Serb forces comprising or attached to the Sarajevo Romania Corps, conducted a protracted campaign of shelling and sniping upon civilian areas of Sarajevo and upon the civilian population, thereby inflicting terror and mental suffering upon its civilian population. By his acts and omissions, Stanislav Galic is responsible for Count 1. Violations of the laws or customs of war, unlawful inflicting terror upon civilians as set forth in Article 51 of Additional Protocol 1 and Article 13 of Additional Protocol 2 to the Geneva Conventions of 1949, punishable under Article 3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Count two to four, sniping. Between 10 September 1992 and 10 August 1994, Stanislav Galic, as commander of Bosnian Serb forces comprising or attached to the Sarajevo Romania Corps, conducted a coordinated and protracted campaign of sniper attacks upon the civilian population of Sarajevo killing and wounding a large number of civilians of all ages and both sexes. Such attacks by their nature involving the deliberate targeting of civilians with direct fire weapons. Specific instances of these acts include by way of representatives allegations those matters set forth in the first schedule to this indictment. By these acts and omissions Stanislav Kalic is responsible for count two, crimes against humanity, murder, punishable under F Article 5A of the Statute of the Tribunal, Count 3, Crimes Against Humanity, Inhumane Acts of, Other Than Murder, punishable under Article 5.1 of the Statute of the Tribunal, Count 
Four, violations of the laws and cu or customs of war, attacks on civilians as set forth in Article 51 of Additional Protocol 1 and Article 13 of Additional Protocol 2 to the Geneva Conventions of 1949, punishable under Article 3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Count 5 to 7, shelling. Between 10 September 1992 and 10 August 1994, Stanislav Galic, as commander of Bosnian Serb forces comprising or attached to the Sarajevo Romania Corps, conducted a coordinated and protracted campaign of artillery and mortar shelling onto civilian areas of Sarajevo and upon its civilian population. The campaign of shelling resulted in thousands of civilians being killed or injured. Specific instances of this shelling include, by way of representative allegations, the matter set forth in the second schedule to this indictment. By his acts and omissions, Stanislav Galic is responsible for Count 5, Crimes Against Humanity, Murder, punishable under F Article 5A of the Statute of the Tribunal, Count 6, Crimes Against Humanity, Inhumane Acts Other Than Murder, punishable under Article 5.1 of the sta Statute of the Tribunal. F count 7, Violations of the Laws or Customs of War, Attacks on Civilians as set forth in Article 51 of Additional Protocol 1 and Article 13 of Additional Protocol 2 to the Geneva Conventions of 1949, punishable under Article 3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Signed by the Prosecutor uh, Louise Arbor. And uh, Your Honor, if you uh, desire, I can read uh, annexes. Uh, uh, I trust that uh, your client has understood the indictment. Uh, he supposed, I assume, that he has received already the indictment in a language he could understand. Would you please confirm that to me? Your Honor, uh, we've had an opportunity to meet uh, all day yesterday. Mr. Galic had in his possession a copy of the indictment in the Serbian language. Yes. Uh, we also had a copy of the indictment in the English language. Uh, I am bilingual. I speak Serbian, uh, his language, the one he uses. And we had an, uh, I had the ability to confirm the fact that he has read the indictment in the language that he understands. And I may add, Your Honor, that we had a chance to discuss the contents of the indictment, uh, not only the part of the indictment that was read this morning in open court, but we also had the opportunity to discuss the first and the second schedule to the indictment, which was not read. And if you uh, wish me to, I can tell you our position in regard to the reading of those two uh, schedules. That makes sense. Yes, sir. Yeah. Would you like us to read it? Or Your Honor, I'm sorry. Like, go ahead. Would you um, like the, the registrar to read it? Your Honor, um, I have discussed that matter with Mr. Garland. Uh In the English version, they're called schedules. They're I annexes. That I'm assuming you're referring to the same. Yeah. And um, we have discussed the issue of whether or not to read them. Mr. Garland has indicated to me to tell you that we are giving up or waiving our right to have the two annexes read in open court this morning. He has read them, discussed them with me, and he understands the charges and the facts in those two annexes, Your Honor. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Then, uh, perhaps now, as you know, uh, according to Rule 62, Little 3, which we have previously mentioned, uh, the accused has within 30 days uh, of the initial appearance to, to plead guilty on each account or to plead no, not guilty and uh, I would like you to, to to advise us if he is ready to, to go into a plea today or to use the 30 days for his uh, uh, let, let us say meditation with you on the side I like the way you phrase that meditation. Your Honor, um, Mr. Galic has been informed of uh, the matters that you just uh, spoken. Uh, as I indicated to you, he has reviewed the indictment. Uh, we have discussed uh, the charges uh, which are in the indictment, which are charges 1 through 7. Uh, Mr. Galic, or General Galic, has indicated to me that he is prepared to enter a plea this morning to each and every count of the indictment. That is, counts one through seven. I can tell you that the, the pleas will be no, not guilty as to each and every count of the indictment, but I'm sure that you 
And we want to confirm that with General Gallich. Then we'll proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. You're Kutich. welcome. Mr. Dubiso, would you please read to us each account, each count, and I would like to ask the accused to stand. The accused will, will have to plead, plead guilty or no guilty on each count. Chef Count one, violations of the laws or customs of war, unlawfully inflicting terror upon civilians as set forth in Article 51 of Additional Protocol 1 and Article 13 of Additional Protocol 2 to the Geneva Conventions of 1949, punishable under Article 3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Not guilty. Sorry, I have to put on my... Would you please repeat, Mr. Galch? Nissan Kriv. Not guilty. Thank you. Go on. Chef. Count two. Crimes against humanity. Murder. Punishable under Article 5A of the Statute of the Tribunal. Yes, Mr. Galich. Nissan uh, Kriv. Not guilty. Please proceed, Monsieur de Bisson. Chef de Count three. Crimes against humanity. Inhumane acts other than murder, punishable under Article 5I of the Statute of the Tribunal. Not guilty. Chef de Count four. Violations of the laws or customs of war. Attacks on civilians at set forth in Article 51 of Additional Protocol 1 and Article 13 of Additional Protocol 2 to the Geneva Conventions of 1949, punishable under Article 3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Your Honor, not guilty. Chef Count 5. Crimes against humanity, murder, punishable under Article 5A of the Statute of the Tribunal. Nissan Kriv. Not guilty. Chef. Count six. Crimes against humanity, inhumane acts other than murder, punishable under Article 5I of the Statute of the Tribunal. Nissan Kriv. Not guilty. Chef d'accusation. Count seven, violations of the laws or customs of war, attacks on civilians as set forth in Article 51 of Additional Protocol 1 and Article 13 of Additional Protocol 2 to the Geneva Conventions of 1949, punishable under Article 3 of the Statute of the Tribunal. Your Honor, not guilty. Thank you. Monsieur de Buisson. Would you please take note of the plead of the of non, not guilty on uh, all the counts? I I hardly need to remind our distinguished prosecutor, Mr. Mark Harbin, uh, of his duty under Rule uh, 66, little one, to disclose to the defence as he usually does and as soon as possible, and no later than 30 days, the material supporting the indictment. Uh, I would also add that uh, our defense counsel, as well as the prosecutor, uh, can, according to Rule 72, and within 30 days after the disclosure, disclosure of the supporting materials, file preliminary motions. Uh, any other matters, also, of course, can be raised by way of motion before the trial, the trial chamber. Uh, if you like to add anything, I would like you both to invite you, first the prosecutor, and, and then Mr. Kostic. Just we had, for your information and for purposes of the record, the materials that support this indictment are currently in translation. We anticipate they will be 
completed in their translation in the Serbian language within the 30 days, and we intend to produce them in a timely manner to Mr. Kostic and his client. Additionally, we have informed Mr. Kostic that we are prepared to provide him forthwith with English language versions of the supporting material. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Kostic, would you like to add anything? Uh, you know, just to add that I have had a preliminary meeting this morning with the prosecution team or members of the prosecution team, and they have assured me, as Mr. Harmon has just indicated to you, that the materials in English will be uh, prepared uh, and uh, provided to me sooner than the materials in the Serbian language, and I'm satisfied with their representations at this time. I thank you very much. Uh, I think we can adjourn the meeting, we can adjourn the proceedings, and the future dates will be fixed. Thank you. All right, for your full event.